congrats. Thank you. Um, Ron's just going to introduce you and then just answer questions. We'll see. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Welcome in Skylar and Brittany. We're going to go first right away to Jeff Metcalf, hometown. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, first off for Brittany, um, can you just talk about, you've gone through this a lot, switching back and forth between national team, Olympic team, Russian team, Mercury. Um, what, what's it like doing that? And what are the key things to making that work? I mean, the good thing is it's all the same. It's all basketball, you know, and it's just a higher level, more intensity, I think. Uh, you know, of course, the Olympics is the highest tier. And then, you know, it kind of trickles down from there. But it's all kind of the same. You know, we have the same goals. Uh, it's just more eyes on us at different levels, honestly. And also for Skylar um, to be here now, um, you know, the, actually with the Olympic team now, just what, what are some of your early emotions, um, even though you haven't left yet? But <laughs> how's, it, how's it feeling just to have that USA gear on now and know you're going? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, obviously it's been a, a long-term goal of mine and, you know, um, now that it's here, you know, we just focus on that medal. So I think I'm, that's my mindset right now. I'm sure I have moments of reflection, you know, after the experience over, but, uh, for right now, I'm just focusing on, um, what I could do to help our team win a gold and, and whatever, or however big of a small of a role that is. So just trying to do my part and just trying to prepare, um, you know, for that gold medal. So that's, that's all I'm thinking about right now. All right, Jeff, thank you. Uh, Dorothy Gentry, you are up and you're going to be followed by Lauren Rosenberg. Dorothy, go ahead. Okay, thanks. This is for uh, Skylar. Um, Skylar, last time you were an all-star, you weren't a mom. Now you are. How important and special is it? I'm sorry, put my camera on. How important and special is it, you know, to be able to share um, this time around uh, being a mom athlete? What does it mean to you? Yeah, what's up, Dorothy? Hi. Um yeah, you know, it's special. I, I always wanted to have uh, kids. Well, I, I want to have more kids, but I always wanted to have kids while I was playing. Um, I thought it was so important, you know, for my son to see me play. I wanted him to, to see, um, you know, me on this stage. You know, I wanted him to know that he could do anything. And I wanted uh, to share those experiences with him. And um, it's been amazing. Um, I will have to credit everything, though, to my husband, Daniel, you know, everything that he does to just lean in and, and, you know, he's my rock, you know, we don't, we're very far from, from our immediate family. Um, so I couldn't do any of these things uh, that I do on this stage without him. And so it's special, you know, with my son seeing traveling with me, um, you know, just from being at the games to taking him to games and just, um, yeah, I, it, it changed me. Obviously, motherhood, you know, Dorothy changes you and, um, you know, it just makes everything. Uh, you have somebody literally watching you and watching your every move, you know. And uh, before I didn't really, I was kind of conscious of that, but I was like, you know, I, 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 those aren't my kids. You know, I'm not anybody's parent as far as a role model is concerned. And now all I think about is, and, and, and two and three times over before I do something, it's my actions knowing that my son seven is watching me. So yeah, it definitely, uh, you know, changed me in all, in all aspects of life. But, you know, just getting to share some of those experiences with him, him getting to travel the world at such a young age. Um, you know, I wanted him to, to see what's possible. And um, that's definitely gonna be my mindset the whole time um, I'm at the Olympics and away from him and my family. Um, that everything I do is for him and, 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 you know, he is my legacy. So it definitely means a lot to share these experiences with him. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Lauren Rosenberg, you're up. And Doug Feinberg, you're next. All right. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. All right. Hey, what's up, BG and Sky? So this one's specifically for um, BG. So obviously I've asked you before about, you know, being from the H and everything, but you represent Houston so well, the city loves you. Exactly. Um, so what does it feel like, especially going in like this kind of Olympics to be really representing Houston? Cause you're probably like one of the best <laughs> basketball players to come out of this city, to come out of the state um, in like recent years. So how does it feel to just continue going back to the Olympics international competition while representing our uh, great city? 
I appreciate that. Uh, it's very kind of words. Um, you know, everything I do, I always, I always think of Houston, honestly, like uh, anybody that knows somebody from Houston or from Texas, uh, we represent it hard. And uh, just knowing I have everybody back at home, root me on, um, you know, reaching out to me, it means everything to me. And I, I definitely want to do Houston proud by going and just playing my best basketball that I can. Awesome. Thank you all. All right, Doug Feinberg, you're up. Cheryl Coward, you're next. Hey, BG and Sky, you both had awesome all-star moments in the past. And I'm curious tomorrow, and has Dawn talked to you at all yet, like how you guys are approaching this? I mean, you're preparing for an Olympics, but also it's an exhibition game that obviously showcases the league. So there are times that maybe defense may not be at the forefront of people's minds in the all-star game, but is it something that, you know, you're, you're playing a game tomorrow to get ready for the Olympics. So if you're not going to give up free layups, so to speak, as opposed to maybe in the past all-star games? Uh, yeah, definitely a different approach. Uh, I don't know if you recall the game at, I want to say we were at USC before we went to Rio. Uh, it wasn't an all-star game, but we played the, uh, select. the select team. And yeah, they almost kicked our butts. <laughs> so we know it's, it's not, I don't think it's going to be any free layups or any no, of that. Yeah, I, mean, like, I think it's no. cool though, to think that team on the other side ain't going to try to beat us. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're going to be competitive. I don't think it'll be the traditional uh, setting that you see. And um, I know I ain't letting nobody get no free layup. Nah, no free uh, layups. But yeah, I, I think it's definitely going to be a competitive environment. You know, at the end of the day, we're all competitors. We all love this game and we all want to win. Um, but this is all about our preparation. So our main goal is to win gold and we want to just continue to get better every day in that preparation. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Cheryl Coward, you're up. Danny Thompson, next. Hi, my question is for uh, BG. Um, earlier today in the presser with Team WNBA, Arike asked Satu if she was going to dunk on you during the All-Star game, and Satu said yes. So <laughs> just your thoughts on uh, these uh, rivalries, <laughs> these, these bravado and rivalries during the All-Star game, and is it is it fun to have these, like, fun, uh, you know, out of the blue? <laughs> can, can she even dunk? I, this question for you. Uh, I mean, no one has ever tried to dunk on me. I mean, I've had dudes try, but they didn't succeed. But um, last hey. time we played, or last time uh, we were there, you dunked. Yeah, I did. I did. I you, 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 I, I passed it to yeah, you. Thank yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. It's gonna be some dunks. Just I wonder who's gonna do them. Next. <laughs> All right, Danny Thompson, you're up. Skyler and BG, Danny Thompson with three point conversion. Great to see you as always. You cutting out. All right, Danny, we're going to have to come back to Danny. We're going to have to come back to you. An internet connection. All right, Danny, try that again real quick if you can, one time. Can you type it and then somebody tell him? All right, Danny, we're, Danny, we're going to move to uh, Nick McCarville with Olympics.com. Nick McCarville. Yeah, uh, uh, he's still trying. Uh, Danny, type, type your question, Danny. We'll read it for you. Uh, Sorry, Skylar, if I can ask you, is is there one or two things? Can you hear me? All right. Danny, send us a text. Danny, Danny, just send us a chat. We'll see what we can do for you. We're going to move to Nick McCarville. Nick, you're up. Yeah, Skylar, is there one or two things? I mean, obviously, everyone has what they have to travel with, your phone, your passport. Are there one or two things you have to take with you to Tokyo? Uh, not very much because we kind of in a bubble, you know, we figure we just don't really be training and, and, and back, you know, that's it. So maybe, my, com maybe my computer, some cars. Uh, Skylar. Yeah. Is somebody yeah, I don't know. Probably some for some, you know, to be in a room, probably take some cars for the plane or some play some spades or some with the team or, you know, my computer, watch my shows. 
Um, you know, that's pretty much it. We're going to be pretty low key besides the games and training over there. We'll be in a, in a very strict bubble. Yeah. And Brittany, if I, if I can follow up with you, uh, three on three is making its Olympic debut. What's your perspective on the sport, on the discipline and how excited are you for to have it in the Olympics? I'm excited to watch it. Honestly, uh, I think it's amazing that the three on three is in, is in the Olympics. Uh, we did it in practice a couple of times and whoo, it's not three on three. I remember playing <laughs> and growing up, but it's, it's intense. So, uh, um, you know, wishing them luck. USA go out there, bring it home for us. All right. Thank you. Kelly Cohen, you're up. And Alex, as you next, Kelly. Hi, Skylar. Kelly Cohen with ESPN. Um, I kind of want you to go through your growth at college um, in Notre Dame to now as an Olympian, kind of just that entire process and how you feel about that full circle. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, that was long ago now. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously coming out, you know, we came out the same year and um, coming into the league, you know, my rookie year it was a challenge for me just trying to, you know, adapt and just trying to navigate the W and, you know, how I fit in the W, my game, my style of play. And, um, you know, obviously coming back the second year, making first team all WNBA, making all star, you know, just really um, just proving to myself, you know, I belong in this league. I could be a top player in this league. And, um, you know, I've been through a lot of peaks and valleys. I've been through injuries. I've been through, you know, obviously, um, you know, pregnancy and having a baby and all those things. And um, specifically with Team USA, you know, I've been in the system since I was 15 or 16 years old. And um, now I'll be 31 at the Olympics um, coming up soon. And so, yeah, it's, it's full circle. I think, you know, just for me, I guess my story would just be, um, you know, stick to itiveness, I guess, and, and just staying with the process and really, I guess, not to sound corny, but really, you know, trusting the process. And but it just comes down to me just putting the work in. You know, I don't go overseas. I've never been overseas before in the off season. So, you know, my off season is is a grind just trying to, um, you know, keep up with these women who, you know, the league is competitive every year. It gets more competitive to sustain the level of play with with all the talent around it and coming into the league every year. So, um, yeah, you know, I've, I've really been through a lot and, and, you know, to come and finally, you know, make the team and have the opportunity uh, to win a gold medal. I, I definitely would say it's a full circle experience for me. So I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, my eyes are just on that gold medal. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Alex. Azzi, you're up next. Hey, Skylar. Uh, hopefully this will piggyback well. Um, in terms of kind of this long-term dream that you've had, I think you were uh, like just six years old when this gold medal streak started for the U.S. And I'm curious, like, do you remember watching Atlanta? Were you too young or, or when did yeah, you start you know, watching? No, I do because that was the first time I saw like black women like that look like me like on that stage and playing. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I can be like them, you know, like the Lisa and, and the Dawn Staley's and, you know, seeing those women perform at that level in 96. And then I think it was the We Got Next campaign mm -hmm. that came like after that. And then shortly after was the W. So that was really the first time I saw women that look like me, WNBA player, you know, stars, you know, they weren't W yet, but I'm talking about future WNBA, but that was the first time I saw you know, women playing on that stage and being highlighted like that was in the in the Atlanta Olympics. And um, yeah, I just never forget the impact it had on me. It definitely gave me, um, you know, hoop aspirations. And then obviously I was seven the next time, the next year when the league started and the W started. And, um, you know, and then the Indiana fever, I used to go and watch catch um, down in Indianapolis, which was like two and a half hours, you know, from where I grew up in South Bend. So I could go and, and watch those games and, you know, see those women play. And that definitely took a, um, you know, had an effect on me and, and my dreams of wanting to, to aspire to be in this league. All right, last question. We were able to get the question via the chat. The question was for Skyler, and it was, with you being so focused on the Mercury and their season on a daily basis, when did it finally hit you that the next road trip was to Vegas and to get prepared for your first Olympics? Sorry, can you ask me that again? Sure. This was for Skylar, the question that we could not hear before. The question was, <clears throat> with you being so focused on the Phoenix Mercury and your season on a daily basis, when did it finally hit you that the next road trip was to Vegas and to get prepared for your first Olympics? Yeah, I, I still think it's, it's kind of kicking in right now. You know, today the first day of, was the first day of practice. And, you know, we come in, you know, um, I'm wearing number five, which is, you know, 
I mean, you just talk about the history of, of the number. You talk about, um, you know, our coach, obviously, Dawn Staley is no secret in what she's accomplished um, in her career as a player and a coach. And, and just the magnitude of putting that jersey on in the huddle today, I had goosebumps, you know, saying USA, one, two, three, USA. And every time we come, it's, it's really like iron sharpens iron. You know, it's such a pedigree, high pedigree of, of players here, of people who've done this four times, five times, three times, two times, you know, and me just being, uh, you know, wet behind the ears, I guess, um, in, in a sense of, of, of Olympic preparation and getting ready for the Olympics. So, like I said, I, I haven't really... Um, I don't even know if it hit me yet, maybe when we get to Tokyo, but, you know, I'm just so focused, like I say, on, on preparation. And um, yeah, you know, it's 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 time to, to get to work now. It's not uh, any uh, uncertainty in my mind anymore. It's, you're on the team now, and now it's time for me to um, do my part, you know, to, to try to win for, go for that seventh gold medal. Skylar, Brittany, thank you so much. Yeah. To our media, stay with us. We have one more set of players, Asia Wilson and Chelsea Gray.